All right, welcome to Let's Talk About It Tuesday. I'm Georgette, I'm the mom. And I'm TJ, I'm the son. And we both work and study in the field of psychology and we are passionate about sharing what we know with you so that you can live your best life. And today we're gonna to talk about self-awareness. So self-awareness is the ability to see yourself clearly, uh, do an accurate appraisal, uh, so that you have an understanding of your abilities and how they impact other people. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I, I think most people would rate themselves as having a pretty high self-awareness. Yeah, I think so too. But I also think that's probably not correct. Mm, yeah, for sure. Yeah. Um, it is a key component of emotional intelligence. And it exists on a spectrum. So you don't either have it or don't have it. You have it to some degree, right? Of course. Um, it suggests, the theory about it suggests that we are thinkers separate from our thoughts, right? So we can have thoughts without doing any kind of reflection on it. it, it there's two different things. And so very rarely are we reflective on thoughts that we've mm -hmm. had back in the past. We're normally on to the next one, on to the next one, instead of learning from past ones. Right. Not only do we not listen to other people sometimes, but we don't listen to ourselves sometimes too, right? Amen. Amen. Sister. Uh, Self-evaluation is needed to attend to our inner self. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So there's a concept um, developed by psychologist Joseph Luft and Harrington Ingham, and they combine the names to call it Johari, Johari's window. It's a communication, personality, self-awareness um, idea that says that we have four different selves. We have an open self. This is a self that's known to ourselves and other people. Common knowledge. Right? We have a blind self that is known, unknown to ourselves, but known to other people. Mm. So things they know about us. Mm, that maybe, we can't see. Right. Um, and uh, we have a hidden self known to you, but not others. So things I know about myself that I'm hiding from you. And then an unknown self, unknown to both of us, both Oof. ourselves and others. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. And there are some exercises you can do to... Um, understand these different selves you have. And before we started the broadcast, I asked TJ to look at a list of characteristics and had him pick the ones that he believed in. Now, these would be things on his list, so it'd be known by him. So they could be either um, his, part of his hidden self, something he knows about himself that he's not sharing, or something that everybody knows. All right, what's, what's on your list? Okay. <clears throat> So for the six I picked, I put accepting, energetic, trustworthy, happy, independent, and sensible. Those were my six. Oh, wow. Oh, are we off? <laughs> What'd you get? What'd you get? And, and maybe I can give you an example of why I said what I said. Okay. To me. Um, I put caring, intelligent. I put intelligent with sensible because I think I'm more sensible than intelligent, but continue. Okay. And then I put tense, although what I really want to say is intense. Mm. which could also be passionate. Mm. Okay. It could be on that spectrum. I, I'm, a ten, I'm, a, I'm a tense, yeah, I feel that. Not my top suit. I put brave. Okay. Because the, the, of the, the, <laughs> the thing with the rattlesnake the other day, he, he protected me from a rattlesnake. No, it's not even that big of a deal. <laughs> Stop it, guys. Don't write a story, Don't write a story about it. Uh, reflective. I put reflective for you. Okay. I was thinking about that one. I was, I put that with, um, sensible, I think. And too. there were, there were a couple that were not on the list. So I didn't okay, think the me. list did you, did you justice mature? You are an old soul. Mature was on the list oh. and I crossed it out to put sensible. Okay. But mature and sensible. I thought, I thought mature was a little too egotistical. I thought sensible. I thought mature in old soul. Yeah. That's what I was thinking yeah. too. But I still thought I don't, that's weird to say about myself. And then there oh, wasn't a word true. for the other thing that I really think you are. You're the kind of person who lives life to the fullest. And I wanted to say thought, risk taker slash carefree. I thought that was energetic. Okay. That's what I put. I was, I'm picking up what you're putting so down. So the things on my list are things that are known to others. Um, so it could have been, some of that could have been blind. Maybe that's something you weren't aware of. Or maybe it's something that we both knew about. So I don't think anything I put on my list was a surprise, was it? No, not a no. whole lot. Okay. Uh, but that's kind of an exercise you can do with friends and family, coworkers, to kind of see where the um, understanding is, the awareness of everybody. 
So maybe like if, if I was working with somebody and they come up, came up with things on the list that, that kind of surprised me, maybe that opens my eyes to how I'm being perceived. Right. Mm. So it's, it's just a tool and it's kind of a fun tool. Uh, I didn't like the list. I thought it didn't have enough things on it for me, but yeah, not enough to, not enough to dig down deep mm -hmm. in the roots. I feel like you could say those things like, Oh, okay, cool. Now I know, but not, I can't really work or dig something out of that. I feel like. Right. And there probably wasn't anything on that list that would have been a little controversial, like maybe something you're aware of that, that I'm, I'm in denial yeah, about. Yeah. They were all positive. Yeah. They were all seem to be positive yeah. and, and not realistic. Right. 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 So there are benefits of having a good self-awareness. Um, it allows you to be proactive. It boosts our acceptance hmm. and it encourages positive self-development. And this one kind of struck me because it occurred to me that if we are truly aware of our abilities, our limitations, we have room to develop, right? We have room to grow. So I thought that was kind of interesting. Of course. Always looking at the weaknesses as opportunities for growth. Absolutely. Right? Yeah. Allows us to see things from the perspective of others. Like we were just talking about, if you had things on your list about me that I was unaware of. Yeah. Bird's eye view. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Other people's perspective, other people's stories, other people's problems. Right. Allows us to exercise self-control, uh, to be creative and productive, to have pride in ourselves. Um, better decision makers, better communicators, and increased self-confidence and job-related well-being. So those are just some benefits of being aware of who you are. This is going to be about a lot of lists today, just to give you a heads up. Um, I found a list of things we should know about ourselves, and I thought this one was really kind of interesting because well, I don't think that we um, think through some of this. Um, the first thing you should know about yourself is how well do you use your senses and speci uh, specifically your vision, your hearing, and your feeling well, senses. One, well, in that, one, in that sense, there's an exercise that you can do there from that standpoint. Every time you enter a new room, identify five things that you can see and say why you're grateful for them. Then identify four things that you can feel, right? Then identify three things that you can hear. Identify two things that you can, uh, what's the other sense? Hit me with it. I always Well, these track. are the three big ones. So a taste is another one and um, smell. Those are the other two big oh, ones. Oh, two things that you can smell and then mm -hmm. one thing that you can taste. Do that in each room that you go into and that will help create the mindfulness. And that also kind of goes to that. It's an exercise that you can do for the senses. Yeah, I like that because uh, grounding is a strategy to help you be self-aware. They do list that and that's exactly what you're talking about. The one thing that the, the point that I read about this that I thought was interesting is that we don't use those equally. We may rely just on vision or rely on hearing, but just the concept of using them equally, I thought was really kind of interesting. Well, one of them just senses wise is going to become stronger than others. So the other ones are going to have to compensate in some way for that mm -hmm. one. So it makes sense that by right. this point where we are now, there's probably ones that we uh, focus on a lot more than others, even more so subconsciously. Right. It almost makes me want to close my eyes when I go into a room just to make sure I'm giving adequate attention to those senses. Uh, the other thing we should know about ourselves is what are, what's our worldview? Mm. You know, um, do we believe in God? You know, those, those bigger pictures, where do we fit into the worldview? Purposefully, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, what are our beliefs about ourselves? What, what, do you understand your limitations, your abilities? Uh, that's important to know so that you can develop, right? Yeah, journaling it down, mm -hmm. writing it down is the easiest way to make it mm -hmm. more so separation from it. And then you can start to create goals, you start to write down goals, things that you want to think, behaviors that you want to do that's going to take control of that aspect as opposed to taking control of just, oh, I know this about myself, right. but forgetting that we can change it. Right. Uh, what's most important to us? So once you have a list of things, what, what are your priorities? Like, um, how divided are we? Those inner conflicts, always good to be aware of the inner conflicts that you have. I always say regarding what's most important to us, we should always have in our pocket or on our phone or something, a, a gratitude list with the top 10 most things that we're most grateful for. Those are most likely going to be the things that we're most, that are most important to us. And you may need to read that from time to time, maybe every hour, maybe some days more than others, but just pulling that out once again helps you refocus, makes you more aware of the things that are, that really matter outside of some things that can quickly draw your attention away from those really important things. Right. So then I mentioned how divided are we in terms of our inner conflicts? What things do we struggle with? Mm -hmm. um, the cognitive dissonance that we experience. Um, what are our stress and negativity triggers? Oh, super important to stress understand Stress is very those. important. Yeah. 
because um, you can act on those, you can prevent those, you can prepare, prepare for those yes, more importantly. The absolutely. best thing that we can do as from a psychology standpoint is make you aware of these things, of where the stressors <laughs> lie, and identifying the things that you can do in that moment to help you not really give in to that stressor or to that mm -hmm. weakness. Um, this is an interesting one too. Things we should know about ourselves is how are we a reflection of our parents? Mm. Isn't okay. that's an interesting question. We should say that, but with the amount of time that I've, I've been working and there's so many, uh, family issues. Mm -hmm. So many of them stem from sibling, a parent. I think that is a very important question because I think a lot of what we're dealing with today comes from back then. So I think it's a very good, important question along these lines. Um, uh, what are our personal limitations and abilities? We kind of talked about that already. Um, how do we get in our own way? I think that was an interesting question too that we need to understand about ourselves. And I want to go back to A, what are your personal okay. limitations and abilities? The more that you make yourself aware of those and identifying them, the more that when somebody else says them to you, it doesn't make as much of an impact because you're practicing going through it. So uh, it's good to identify those things because the more that you identify those things, because you can say so many worse things about yourself than anybody else can. So the more that you can go through those, make yourself aware of those, when someone else says them to you, it just boop, 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 just bounce off because either, you know, it's true and you're working on it or it's false and doesn't have any merit. So fuck them. Pardon my French. I'll have to check the box not made for kids when I upload this. <laughs> <laughs> Um, going to, uh, speaking or adding on to that, I think that when you do that, what you're doing is you're taking power away from those limitations that you have. Um, just like you said, um, how do we get in early? Uh, what are our goals for the future? That mm -hmm. was, uh, something else you need to be aware of, right? You should identify every day. What's your goal for the day? What was your reason for today? Why did you open up two gifts this morning? Which were your eyes? You tell me. How you can learn more about yourself. Uh, TJ mentioned a couple already, he talked about journaling. Um, one thing you can do is take a personality test. There are some quick personality tests online that kind of reveal information about yourself. Uh, something else you can do is create space and time. Disconnect, be alone with yourself. Because right? mm -hmm. that almost forces reflection. Yeah, like this right now, what we're going through, um, everybody's going to be a little bit more reflective. Everybody's going to be hopefully experiencing a little bit more. You also see a lot of people are becoming a little bit more aware of some of the things that they can do or starting to adapt because that's what we start to do. We start to adapt. Mm -hmm. A complete a 360 degree assessment. So this would be asking people all around you. You'll see this term uh, in uh, performance reviews at work. Some, some companies do 360 degree assessments. Uh, this is basically getting assessments from everybody around you, your work people, your friends, your family, uh, get their perspectives like we were talking about earlier. Uh, similarly, asking for informal feedback and gaining uh, to help gain a different perspective. And TJ mentioned that already. Uh, reflection, practice, practice mindfulness. And, and you'll notice in our podcast, we very typically mention a lot of the same things over and over again as things that you can do to help, right? Uh, look for ways to unwind, like taking a walk. Um, exercise in and of itself heightens your percep perception, right? Mm -hmm. um, be curious about yourself. Wonder, wonder. Question everything. Mm -hmm. And then if someone says something about it, go out and see for yourself. And let your walls down. Let your walls come down. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Um, some barriers that we have to self-awareness, a lack of mindfulness, um, cognitive biases. We did a whole podcast on cognitive biases. Look into it. Yeah. Uh, unwillingness to seek feedback. Ooh. Yeah. Unwillingness to even talk about it, open up about it, lay it on the table so that you can possibly rearrange the puzzles. Right. Yeah. I think Puzzle when pieces. you're unwilling to seek feedback, you, you know, you're not going to hear something you don't want to hear. Right. Well, and, and it's, and it's just a fact it's, mm. it, you're missing a huge level of, uh, of acceptance from a psychological standpoint, if you can't even talk about it. You know, you're not going to be able to go through it if you can't talk about it with at least one other person or even with yourself out loud. Confirmation bias. It's another barrier we have to self-awareness. If something already aligns with what we believe, um, we don't challenge it, right? We need to challenge. We need to wonder about ourselves. We need to question ourselves. Right? Uh, some warning signs that maybe you don't have enough self-awareness. Maybe you're a bully. 
Maybe mm. you're a bit defensive. Maybe you're a control freak. Maybe you're saying things like, like, I don't feel like I'm like this, but everybody else says that I am, right? What is the likelihood that all of those people are wrong? And also that focusing on the wrong part, the fact that you don't believe it really is the only thing that matters because it doesn't matter what other people think. You know what I mean? So looking at it from that standpoint mm -hmm. as well, if, something, other pe if one person says it, eh, if two or three start to say it, you have to start questioning because you, no, you have no right to tell another person how you make them feel right? That's totally, that's up to them. You know, it could be wrong, but it's all up to their interpretation of the things that you do. Yeah. If you're hearing a common theme then look for the common denominator. If you're passive aggressive, it may be that you're not self-aware mm. right? or if you're grandiose, right? Oh. You're over the top confidence, right? You're overcompensating probably for something. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. So some food for thought about self-awareness, food, tacos, right? Oh, hey, okay. yo, hey, yo. <laughs> oh my gosh, I get it. Let's talk about it. Okay. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I got it like past episode five. Because you're self-aware, right? <laughs> Heck yeah, I'm questioning everything. Uh, so this week, we would encourage you to take some time to increase your self-awareness so that you can live your best life. Till next time. Till let's next talk about it Tuesday. Boom goes the dynamite. Can you, how do you stop it? Oh, do what do you want? Can you do it?